Stay tuned for Escape. Monday morning at 9 o'clock on This is New York. Let Bill Leonard tell you the details about his exciting new contest. It's a contest you want to enter, so get the details this Monday on This is New York with Bill Leonard. The time now, 8 o'clock. WCBS AM and FM, New York. Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are stranded with a carnival just this side of the Iron Curtain. When out of nowhere, a fortune is within your grasp. Riding a number on a roulette wheel hundreds of feet high. While at your shoulder, laughing at you, a killer clown from whom there is no escape. Listen now as Escape brings you David Friedkin and Morton Fine's story, Carnival in Vienna. <laughs> days, the row of tenements used to be called the shutting off. Then there was a war, and it was called rubble. Then it was cleaned up, and it was just an empty space in the older part of Vienna. That's where the carnival set up. Pitch and wind stands, wheels, a midway act on the high wire for a valley, rides, palm readers, and the biggest Ferris wheel this side of the Rhine. Twenty carriages and a four-minute ride. And myself, front gate superintendent. John Ashcroft Allison. A nice sounding name. John Ashcroft Allison. The help calls me Hare, which is Mr. That's the way it is. And there's Lily, who works a gaff whenever it's needed. She's got red hair. We get along fine. Mm. <laughs> oh, wait. Anna, is that better? My beauty. Every time you pass a shiny thing, a mirror, anything, it stops and talk and trades and look at your hair. Want to look good for you. The next time. Ten dollars, American money. Maroon. The shirt. Pink. Silk. Cashmere. Gila. Mm-hmm. And also me. Liar. What do you mean? Liar, what? you are vain. You are proud and you have nothing to be proud of. You are hasty. You are a thief. You are... What do you mean? Thief. Thief. One who robs from another. Thanks. Tell you what. You and me, the plans you have. Oh, baby, baby. One of these days, back to the never. States. You'll never go to the States. You cannot, I know. Joey, tell him. Last night you were very dark, Johnny. And although I did not want to... No, oh, I'll bet you didn't. Although I did not want to hear, Joey told me you were a soldier in a state called Missouri, where you were with a carnival as a man who... For his handwriting characteristics, like he does, I And once the guy wrote down his name for me to analyze, and I saved his signature and forged it for three months all over the place before they almost caught up with me. Yes. Well, one day I would have told you. He didn't have I to. didn't do anything. They were thought, and he told me. Oh, listen. And he we'll... told me how you fled from your country to Europe, and how he met you, and how you've been traveling from carnival to carnival. Will you listen to me? Come on, let's walk. Listen, Lily. One of these days, I'm going to get my hands on enough dough. Not all new things. That's it. South America. What do you think? Shut up! Shut up! 
Shut up, shut up, shut up. A clown, why don't you do something about that clown? <laughs> why should I do something about him? I like him. Hansel is by the way laugh. But a wooden clown. I can't him the same thing, Hansel. A wooden clown, a mechanism. <laughs> listen to him, listen to Hansel. It's a purely mechanical laugh. Comprised to induce customers into my hall of mirrors. <laughs> why does he upset you? The noise he makes. Come on, Lily. I said, come on. What else is he here, Alison? As if he knows your name and laughs at you? And knows you stop and preen like a peacock and laughs at you? Just want to tell you something, Kirby. My advice. Change the record in that hunch. In that clown. Come on, Lily. Johnny. What? What do you want? As if you were upon your shoulder, laughing at you. Huh? Hansel. Oh, it's not bad. It's... Laughing at you. Now, let's forget it, huh? All right. I have a in heaven. How much did we have here? I found her. I'm not such a puritan. I love to watch you perform. Come on. Professor. In the state, he's a barber. Yes. Let us go. Sure. What's the matter? Joey. Huh? Joey, they are the crowd. What is it? Yeah. You wait here. Why? Where are you going? Just wait. Joey. Huh? Now back here, Joey. Back at the trailer. What for? Back here. Hi, Joey. What's the matter with you? Been friends, haven't we? Bumped into each other in a Soho bar and buddies right off. For sure. Besides the fact you're a lush, you're a good boy. Good friend. Good shield for any carny in the world, right? Oh, right. I don't mind you took a drink and spilled a lily about me. One way or another, she had to find out. Well, what's this all about? You, uh, heisted a wallet just now. Huh? From a guy. Tourist, right? Tourist, huh? He was with a blonde from Maxie's. He had to be a tourist. The way he was dressed. Green shorts with a feather in his hat. Give me the wallet, Joey. I'm taking no you wallet. You talk to me like that, Joey. You're close to death. I'm telling you, I didn't hear <laughs> Come on. Johnny? Johnny? <laughs> now, we'll take the wallet, huh, Joey? Uh, in here, Joey, inside your shirt? Oh, sure you have. Ah, oh, let's see. Uh-huh. Tourist, all right. Paul Mack, Boston Mass. Card, card. Where's the dough? Where's the dough, Joey? You already left the dough out of this? <laughs> Wait a minute. You know what, Joey? You'll never know. Bye, pal. Chum, friend of mine. One day it'll all catch up to you. One day, Johnny, it's all gonna catch up to you. And when it does, when it does. I didn't look at him anymore. Not at Joey. At John Ashcroft Allison looking out at me from the aluminum side of the trailer. Hand on the knot of the ten dollar tie. And he winked back at me, and his lips shaped the words I was saying. Twenty-three thousand dollars. Letter of credit in Mr. Paul Mack's wallet, complete with identification card. So I looked around for the green short, the man with a feather in his hat, with a blonde from Mack. And the way it happened, I bumped into them coming out of the hall of mirror. I trailed them over to the Ferris wheel, watched Mr. Mack slap down some change for a couple of tickets. Waited until they get into a carriage on the wheel. And it started up again. Then I walked over to Otto. The theater was operating. 
Mr. Allen. Ah, hello, Otto. <laughs> Working on it? Nothing. Uh-huh. Push this stick, the wheel stop. Pull it back, the wheel stop. Easy. Ah. Hey, uh, how about you and uh, Marlene? Marlene. I never got to see her. Although she works right over there, we only get waves. Then, when we are both off, her boyfriend comes and takes her away. Why don't you go over and talk to her? Sure, go ahead. I'll take over the wheel. I would certainly like to see Molly closely. Uh, go on, beat it. Yeah. Biggest Ferris wheel this side of the river. Twenty carriages in a four-minute ride. Mr. Paul Mack from Boston, Mass, in the green one, with a blonde, enjoying. To keep him in the carriage like get his $23,000, that was the trick. A 20 to 1 shot. Scoop a handful of sand and gravel off the ground. Into the oil intake. Another handful. Another. Four minutes with 14 times around. Eight times and nothing happened. I knew there wasn't a chance of that wheel coming down for a long, long time. And there wasn't a ladder that high that could get them down. $23,000 on a 20 to 1 shot. I just hit. You are listening to Carnival in Vienna. Tonight's presentation of Escape. Edgar Bergen fans will be doubly delighted with the new Edgar Bergen Show with Charlie McCarthy. Remember, Sunday nights on most of these stations, the new Edgar Bergen Show with Charlie McCarthy. And now back to Escape and the second act of Carnival in Vienna. And the big wheel not spinning anymore against the Vienna sky. And for a little while, the small riot of Carney wound down. New attraction added to early afternoon with the Danube flows. And how the kids took to it. Climbed the girders and hung from them like skinny rag dolls and kicked their feet into Otto's face who was going crazy trying to fix his Ferris wheel. And a small detail of Russian soldiers took to it, too. Grinning up at the merchandise display of black cotton stockings and bohemian petticoats. And at the very, very, very top, oh, very, the gent from Boston, Mass., with his arms wrapped around a blonde from everywhere. I told Otto to handle it the best way he could. I'd round up some refugees to give him a hand. And I walked away from him. Down the midway. Past the gas bridge. Past the shooting gallery. Past him. Past the clown. I can just take it. Past where the carney started to die and got to be mud and litter and broken straw, where the trailers were, mine bright and shinier than the rest, because there was a displaced straw line very handy with a dust cloth. We needed the work. And the job, class in penmanship. Oh, gentle the writing hand. Roll, circle, and slam. And then Johnny Allison into Paul Mack, gent from Boston, Mass. Paul Mack. Paul Mack. 
doing, Johnny boy? Idiot. What you doing, Johnny boy? There's a bottle of schnapps over in the cupboard, Joey. Drink yourself dead. Uh-uh, no. Uh-uh. Maybe you don't understand because you're fuzzed up. You're not wanted, Joey. Oh, now that hurts. Hurts when you say it to an old friend. But you could buy back my affection. I like you, Johnny. Honestly. I don't want not to like you. Lush. Beat it, Lush. Don't talk like that, Johnny. You made a noise like $23,000 when I heard you laugh. I don't know the angle, but I want in. Half, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, peddle your dream to Madame Zaza. That's her pitch, not mine. What was you doing when I come in, Johnny? Writing a letter? Practicing, maybe. Just no feeling the digits just so you can let me see, Johnny. Get your face away from it. <laughs> you didn't even let me see. But I got something I want you to see, Johnny. I brung it just to show you. Oh, <laughs> oh Joey, Joey. You really are fuzzed, aren't you? <laughs> uh-uh. No. All this your gun does, Johnny. All it does in the world is to make you and me buddies. I squeezes on it just a little bit, and all it says... You hear it, Johnny? All it says is, buddy, buddy, buddy. Like it was a mama doll. You say half to me, Johnny. Say half of 23 grand, and I don't squeeze no more. <laughs> now, give it to me, Joey. Give me the gun, and then you can go hit the schnapps bottle. Give me, Joey. You can squeeze the schnapps bottle. You just bottle. sit right down on the floor, Johnny, so it'll go off right between your eyes. Give me, Joey. Oh, drop it. I'll oh, throw it away. I'll kill you. Sure. I'll, be, I'll kill you. Kill me. <laughs> Johnny boy. Johnny boy, no, you didn't have to do that. Give me. Give me. Sure. Sure. Here, here, take it. I was kidding. Nobody can play you for a sucker, Johnny boy. You help me up and I'll... Me, Johnny. Got to be a dreamer. Like this. Just like this. dead as I could make him. I picked him up, carried him to my car, propped his body in the front seat next to me. Whoever may have seen it figured the only thing to figure. Joey was stoned again. And Herr Johnny Allison was nursing him, like he'd done a thousand and two times. It took 15 minutes to drive out to the edge of the Russian zone, along it to a square block of rubble, behind it to an alley. I opened the bottle of schnapps I'd remember to bring along, rinsed out my mouth with it, and poured the rest down Joey's throat. I slid the bottle into his coat pocket, eased him out of the car. What was in the alley was some garbage cans scraped clean, some phony dogs who just stared, and a no-name lush. In the trailer by half past one, I could forge the signature of Mr. Paul Mack with the pen between my teeth. Eight letters, straight up and down, with a couple of curls in between by two, I was in the Vienna State National Bank on Hittelstrasse. Good afternoon, sir. What can we do for you this afternoon? You can do business with me this afternoon, mein Herr. Here, my letter of credit. My identification card. I'm Paul Mack of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, of course. Well, mein Herr, let's get with it. Oh, of course, of course, Herr Mark. Something, uh... Uh, Nothing, nothing, but nothing. Everything is in proper order. Only, uh... Only what? Then you telephoned yesterday. You informed us you would not come here until 10 of tomorrow morning. Oh, you mean... Uh... When you telephoned yesterday, it was off noon. Surely you do remember. Oh, surely I do remember, my dear. Uh, something came up to change my plan, so I'm here now this afternoon. Does that make a difference? No, 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 surely no. Except only that it gives us short notice to gather the money. Five thousand Swiss dollars, was it not? Twenty-three. Thousands? Thousands, my dear. But the notation I have. Here, I show you. Here, that you telephoned yesterday, that you would come tomorrow. That is a five thousand. Oh, you goof. Somebody made a mistake. Now, look, I've got a deal. I need every cent left of my letter of credit. 
23000 Cash, dollars, Swiss, or American. Make a choice. Oh, of course, of course, Mr. Mack. Did you sign this paper for me so that I may compare signature? The formality only, uh, isn't it? Oh, I, uh, I want to. The pen. Thank you. Danke. And now, only moments longer. I, I must corroborate with Herr Schindler, the formality. Oh, sure. I'll wait. It is all that it should be, Mr. Mack. Your money is in this parcel. $23,000. Thank you, my name. Uh, an offer thing. Hmm? To sign this receipt. It, 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 oh, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Thank you. You understand, Amat, the necessity of caution. However, there's the thing, if you don't mind, of course... Look, I'm in a hurry. What's eating you? How does it feel? How does a man feel when he can step into a bank, ask for tens of thousands of dollars, and get it? <laughs> good. Feels good. Wonderful. Johnny, baby. Open up. Johnny, where have you been? Now, oh, come here. Oh, baby, baby. An hour, and I missed you. I'm a fool. Uh-huh. Oh, but Johnny, the excitement. The deal being stopped, and a man at the very top of it, screaming and screaming that he has been robbed. How is a man robbed to sit on top of territory? Yeah. Yeah, funny. <laughs> Lily. Yes. We're leaving. See ya? Yeah. What do you want, Lily? What are the dreams? Paris, Rome, London? Dream one over me, baby. Johnny Allison makes it come true. Crazy, Johnny. Now grab a coat, Lily. From this minute, it's all you'll ever need. Where are we going? I told you, whatever ride you want, whatever bobble to lay against your neck or your fingers or your toes... Is the money you have saved as front gate superintendent of a cheap side street carnival? With $23,000. What are you talking about? I hit. Like I always said I would. $23,000 worth. Now, come on. Cover it with a coat. Where with... did you get such money, Johnny? Oh, what difference? It's green. It makes a pretty sound when rubbed together. Make it whisper and it buys mink for you and silk for me. Like I saw once in a shop in Rome. That's it, baby. First stop Rome, so Johnny can look good, so Johnny can look swell, so Johnny can... You stole it, didn't you? I promoted it, baby. You stole it from the American who screamed from the top of a fairy tree. Me, baby, me, Johnny Allison. Come on. Get out. Huh? Get out. I want no part of you. It's me you're talking to, Lily. The man with the promises, the man with the dreams. So don't talk. Promise me. Dream men, men of nothing. See. Who will go with you? Not Lily. Not I. You're lost in it, baby. Not with you, promise men, dream men, stupid men of angles and gimmicks and promoting. Is that because you hate the truth of your head? Anything else you need to say? <laughs> you are a joy and lush. Drunk. Drunk with yourself. Drunk with your stupidity. Drunk with your drunkenness. Yo. 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 It's Johnny Ellison who is Yo. <laughs> yo. 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 No, Joey. Shouldn't have called me that. Not Joey. You shouldn't. I 
I stood over her for a long time. For all the time Lily needed. With her fingers to unclench and trail along the floor. For the life to go out of her. And then get out. Walk. Don't run to the midway. Crowd in the Ferris wheel moving now. Midway in the palace of fun. A back exit to the world through the hall of mirrors. And I was on my way. Hansel the clown laughed, but this time I didn't care. Johnny Allison on his way with 23 grand to take him wherever he wanted to go. The hall of mirrors. I knew it like a book. Like I knew the back of... Back of my hand. So, turn the corner. Not this way. But sometimes a guy forgets. Palace of fun. Hall of mirrors. They had time to get in. It was fun trying to get out. Wherever I went, Johnny Allison came right back at me. Thousand Johnny Allisons. Me trying to beat a ten cent dodge. Easy to get out. Easy. If I didn't see myself, I wouldn't be there, would I? Oh, would I? I couldn't get all of them. Dodge, too many, too many. Johnny, that was me. He didn't look so good anymore. He didn't look like anybody I knew. Yeah. Like, like Joey, maybe. Like Joe. The way she said. Oh, yes, yeah, there he is. There on the floor. Uh, to kill a girl, then to hide in the hall of mirrors. Such stupidity? Uh, perhaps not. For here a man can laugh at death. <laughs> as Johnny laughs, eh, Johnny? And here a man can observe himself in a thousand mirrors. Eh, hey, Johnny? From every angle. That is, if a man can stand looking at himself. Come, Johnny. Come on. has brought you Carnival in Vienna, a story written and directed by David Friedkin and Morton Fine. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Lillian Bias, Jack Crucian, and Hans Conry. Also heard were Barney Phillips, Robert Boone, and George Peroni. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leif Stevens. Next week. You are flying a plane high above the island of Masafuera, 300 miles off the coast of Chile. Beside you, a beautiful woman. And only she knows it's the last stop. The last time around, a death trap from which there is no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you Tony Barrett's story, There Was a Crooked Man. (laughs) 